Welcome to Democratically Speaking. My name is Mark Lindy. I'm your host and I am chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee and I'm doing this on my volunteer unpaid time so I can get all the Democrats that are running in this election uh, to help them to the next step to get elected to their offices. We have today uh, a familiar face to cable TV but not to this program. We have Blessing Rogers. Blessing, welcome. Thank you, Mark. Nice of you Thanks to be for here. Me. You're welcome. We're about a week away from the election, and we're going to pl be playing this recording all the way up till the day before. Um, tell us the Blessing Rogers story, who you are, and then we'll talk about why you're running for office after we talk about your biography a little bit. Okay. Um, the Blessing Rogers is a mother. I have one son and several grandchildren believe it or not. Okay. Um, I've lived in Brockton for since 2003, 2002, 2003. I moved here. Um, I, since then, I kind of like started off um, Hope for Children International, which is where I work. Um, actually, I have a legal background. I've worked for, I used to work for Amnesty. Um, in West Africa to advocate for children and women and um, human rights issues. Um, I have a law degree, JD, and I also went ahead, I did a specialty in human rights, which is what kind of like really, apart from like most lawyers just do their JDs, okay, mm -hmm. but because I wanted to do human rights and I, I, I knew exactly what I had in mind when I went into law school is I want to advocate for justice and social justice issues. So I, when I did LLM at uh, Washington College of Law on human rights, and then I started to advocate, do amnesty work uh, with, uh, in West Africa and other African countries. And um, so I, I worked on issues that has to do with like war criminals, those kind of issues. Um, then as I went along, I realized that I really love working with children. So my best bet is to go ahead and start up something that focuses on children that would allow me to have the lead way to actually do what I want to do, which is working with children that are at risk, both locally and internationally. Mm -hmm. um, so we started Hope for Children. Actually, Hope for Children, what we do is we do mentoring here locally. We also started off doing um, working with uh, children that are in the street, homeless children. But we do, uh, at some point we realized that um, DCS handles that all for the children that are under age. Mm -hmm. And the ones that we are targeting wasn't really, you know, they're not really on the street because there's a lot of agencies that are taking care of them. Okay. So we kind of like shifted a bit. So, okay, let's deal with the um, 16 to 22, those unaccompanied youths who are couching. So we, you know, we go to the street, we do street outreach, and we talk to them. And uh, as years went by, we really don't go so much out. They come to us. Mm -hmm. So we get referral from a gateway uh, program, Youth Works, sometimes the courts, and we, we have partnership with other organizations too who send us kids. So when they come to us, we follow up with mentoring and referral, finding out what their needs are, and we kind of like follow up with it. And your office is right over on Belmont Street, right yes. near the fairgrounds? Yes. Okay. Um, it's a nonprofit. It's a nonprofit organization. Okay. And you, your husband's involved as well? Well, my husband helps out. Okay. So one of us has to make money. Sure. I don't get paid, actually. Well, non Believe it or non not. Nonprofits <laughs> don't necessarily make money. Sometimes yes. they cover costs, but they don't yes. make money. So I saw in your pictures that you've been publicizing during the campaign yes. that some of the youth are working with you. I mean, the next logical step sounds like, from what you're talking about, yes. is a run for school committee to help children. Yes. Well, I'll, actually, it started from there because um, the kids, I hear Brockton keep saying, um, in the newspaper, we have all these honor roll students. And I'm like, this is wonderful, you know. It's good that we have honor roll students. But the fact about it is that I have, I see at least up to 100 
of kids that come into my office yearly. And these are not all rural students. So I, I started to look at it. I said, something is wrong. And they are from the Brockton school system. So why are we constantly talking about the ones that are doing so well when we have this number of children that are not doing well? So uh, we need to do something about that. We need to do, try to figure out a way to bridge that gap. You know, so that's how the thought of going uh, um, running started. And it, it started five years ago, actually. So I said, okay, how do you go about this process? So I asked around the research. They said, oh, blessing, you have to go to uh, political school, which I went to in March. Uh, from, I think we spent six to nine months. Uh, in March trains uh, Democratic women. For, to run for office. So I went to Imaj, I got all that training. So then still working with the kids eventually. So uh, waiting for the right time, you know, and I think this is the right time. And Brockton needs somebody like me who, who, who has worked with the kids, who is working with the kids. After this election, I will still be working with the kids in the street. So. It needs somebody who can advocate for these kids because obviously their needs are not being met. So mm -hmm. we need somebody on the table to say, by the way, wonderful we have these people that are doing great, but there is a lot of our kids that are not meeting the great. You usually find out that kids at the top and kids at the bottom mm -hmm. get help. It's a lot of times a kid in the middle. I'm, I'm a middle child, mm -hmm. okay, middle son, okay. Um, I'm sure you, knowing, you know, how you deal with things, probably brought up some of these issues and didn't feel maybe that they were being addressed. So you said to yourself, maybe I'll run to try to address them. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. And you have an opportunity in Ward 3 where the school committee person is leaving. It's, it's, you know, a vacant seat, so to speak. Exactly. Even if she was staying, I have a feeling you might have run anyway. Um, <laughs> but I know, I, I know your opponent ran against her two years ago mm -hmm. and wasn't successful. So this is a whole new race. We did the debate. We yes. had both of you here. Um, why are you a better candidate than your opponent? I am a better candidate because one, what I bring to the table is experience. I was in the Boston Public School for eight years. So I've been in the classroom. So I know exactly how the school works. I am presently working with kids, hundreds of kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I also, you know, I, I went along also, I teach ESL actually to some of the kids. Because as we went along, I realized their parents also need help. That some of their parents don't have, uh, uh, because uh, ESL classes in Brockton, there's a long waiting line, waiting list all over. So I said, okay, one more it won't hurt. So let's add something. Devote your time, help some of these parents that are willing to come for free. So I still, I teach that. So I, I am the perfect person to be there. And not only that, I have the advocacy background. I'm a very good negotiator. I deal with conflict very well, which I've done in the past mm -hmm. through Amnesty. And I, I know that somebody with my background, I am well-rounded in terms of what, who needs to be on that seat. Mm -hmm. And, you know. the, and the legal background doesn't hurt at Ye all yes. to have that as well. Your super, our superintendent of schools is a lawyer. She yes. has a JD. And Tom Minicello, who's the Ward 1 school committee member. But you have, so you have the, the legal, the advocacy, and education. Yes, the administrator. Right. I am running Hope for Children. Mm -hmm. You know, and I manage for whatever it is. We have volunteers, but we spend money. I manage the budget to make sure that we get what we need to get done with the minimum that we have. So would you make one of your priorities ESL classes because of the waiting list? Is that something you would want to look into with the Adult Learning Center in Brockton? Yes, 
yes, I will definitely, because the waiting list is really, you know, they have one year, two years waiting list. And during that time, this person is looking for a job. Mm -hmm. They need to be able to fill out the application for a job. They need to be able to help their children with homework. Because some of the issues that I found out that parents who are second language is why they can't help their children with homework is that a lack of the language. So we cannot ask parents to participate when they can read their, so their children's uh, information or the homework. You know, I know that when my son was a child, I did help with homework. I would actually read the instruction or listen to it and hear it. So we need to give these parents the opportunity to be able to help their kids mm -hmm. and not feel helpless. So the more of us that actually open up uh, ESL centers, it would be much better for every single one of us, both for the children and for the community as a whole. Well, we do a little bit of that at the Brockton Public Library. I'm on the board of trustees over there. We have a wonderful worker over there who's helped a lot of people. We yes, just, I've met her. Melise. Yes. We, we have uh, a new trustee of the library, mm -hmm. uh, my friend Jean Bradley Durancourt, who just got appointed. He told me when he came to this country from Haiti, he came to the library and he learned a lot of his skills. So he wanted to give something back like you. Yes. And the mayor just appointed him to the board. He had his first meeting with me, and he was our student trustee. He was the graduation speaker. He, was, he hasn't been here that long, and yes. look where he goes. I told him, I said, when you, when you run for president of the United States, just remember who your friends are, okay? <laughs> because, you know, that's important. And yes. we, we did a little thing. Uh, the mayor's office, when the mayor first took office, when Newby, who used to work here, mm -hmm. worked for him, we did some ESL classes like you were talking about in conjunction with the Adult Learning Center and the, the mayor's office and, mm -hmm. and the school department to put those on TV. While people were waiting for the waiting list, they could at least see something that they could learn from. Yes. Okay. It's a little more interactive if you're actually there. Using but TV's, the media to, TV, to achieve the When I was a yes. little kid, Channel 2 used to have French lessons on TV. Right. I, I was eight or ten years old and I used to watch them and I picked up a little bit. And I've, uh, that's, my big, that's my big regret in life. I never mm -hmm. learned languages properly. They don't teach languages in this country properly because there's a whole different way. You've got to start at a younger age. Yes. But it, you're right about the parents needing to have those language skills to be able to help their students. Now you're in Ward 3. Yes. Ward 3 is a very diverse ward. Correct. You have the Kennedy School in Ward 3. You have the Huntington School, which is bordering 3 and 4, yes. I believe, um, South Middle School. And with the North-South Zone, there really aren't any boundaries anymore. You might be representing Ward 3, but the children from Ward 3 go to different schools. They're not all just the Ward 3 schools. Yes, they, some of them both elsewhere. Right, and uh, there's different uh, language immersion programs for the Haitian population, for the Cape Verdean population, yes. the bilingual program, the SPED program. What would be the number one thing you would want to see done differently if you get elected to the school committee? How can you influence, you have seven other colleagues, including the mayor, mm -hmm. okay, you, you are pretty persuasive. So what would you tell them, being part of a team that we need to look at and we need to either do better at or maybe a new idea? Well, one of them is basically, uh, is basically bridging this gap. Because look, the, what we are looking, not looking at here is the social and economical factor of not bridging the gap. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because these young people, if they are not, if we are not able to bring them along, they're not going to get jobs. And if they do get jobs, they're not able to read their paper. Mm -hmm. And I find, the last time I looked, when you go to work, you have to be able to read instruction. Mm -hmm. Now imagine, put to yourself, um, let's say um, an elderly, even if you go to the minimal jobs, mm -hmm. and an elderly that is in a nursing home, and you have this individual taking care of you, and this individual cannot read the instruction. Could you imagine what could happen? I, I've been there because my dad is in a nursing home. He's hopefully coming out mm -hmm. soon. 
but I had to read 150 pieces of paper and have someone go over them with me every single step of the way. And you're making major decisions when you're filling out that paperwork. It's, it's, yes. it's, it's, it's like a contract. It, yes. it talks about private pay. It talks about um, what's covered, what's not covered. Yeah. I mean, even things like, uh, you know, if you have a TV or a phone there, it doesn't, you don't get that covered. It's not free, so it's $7 a day, $10 a day. You add up a 30-month stay, and it amounts to some money. But, I mean, it, it's, it's critical, and you do testing in language. I, I went to school in Florida mm -hmm. for two years, University of Miami. Florida, very bilingual, a mm -hmm. lot, lot of um, Spanish, a lot of Haitian Creole down there. Uh, my brother lives there. He speaks two languages. I, that, that's my regret, like I told you. Mm -hmm. But it's very important. And we have a, we have a great bilingual program in, in Brockton. Mm -hmm. um, always room for improvement. Brockton has a good school system, but I think your point back to the earlier part of the conversation was there's a gap someplace. Yeah, there's a gap someplace. And we need to fix that. Not only that, if these kids are not brought along, economically it's going to affect us you know because look the, the our age is moving on these are the people that we expect to be the leaders mm -hmm. and we are not producing them and also if they are not able to take care of their family you know because they don't have the the sufficient education that they need we are paying, we're going to be paying that tax. In different ways. In different ways. In different ways. ways. It, it could even lead to incarceration. Yes. Which is very expensive. You know, which I always makes say it worse. It's more money to put someone away than t to train them and exactly. help them ahead of time. So they, it's, it, uh, one of my friends, Moses Rodriguez, always mm -hmm. talks about teaching a man to fish rather than giving him a fish. Exactly. Okay? Because exactly. you can fish for a lifetime, and if you hand it out, mm -hmm. it's a handout. Yes. Okay? I, I, I see what you're saying. So if we address that eco economic factor of it, everybody is going to benefit at the end of the day. You know, like you said, sending them to jail does not help anyway. You know, because when they come out, now they even have, uh, they can't get a job. Now, whose burden is that? It goes back to the parents. It goes back to the community. So if we are not going, if we don't address it now, we will address it sometime in the future. And how do we address it? Out of our pocket. Now, I'm sure you've gone to your share of school committee meetings. Yes. And parent meetings at the different schools. Yes. Even though you're not elected yet, I know when you're a candidate, you do your homework, you do your research. Yes. What have you heard, you're, um, and I, I also know you're probably out knocking on doors and talking to people. Yes, so I've What are you there. hearing from the people in Ward 3, the people that you want to represent? Well, I've, first of all, I want to thank them because uh, for them to allow me to even enter their, their space, you know, I've heard so much. Um, I hear people very angry. Um, I, I'm, I was telling somebody, I said, I've developed a third ear, you know, that ear that allows me to assimilate information um, and then sit back and dissect it. I said, hmm, do really? Broughton has this much issue? People are that much angry? And s most people are talking about um, how parents don't have access to schools, you know, uh, that they, they can't, that the information that they get from the school you know, uh, it's not often, especially with parents. Why, how, how can we improve that? I said to them, well, I think that that is something that, that, that the, community, uh, the community as a whole has to address because I think maybe they need, there's some sort of infrastructure that needs to be put in place that can help get information to parents and get parents' involvement also at the same time. You know, so that parents can actually participate because parents is the main, th they are the main things. Quite all right, we want teachers to be magic makers and do everything. But teachers cannot be that effective without the parents' involvement, which is also what I've 
ended up having to tell some parents, said, look, you need to get involved. Now, the other thing is they are concerned about crimes. Some people are concerned about homelessness. Let me tell you something about homelessness and children that are in school. We have a lot of kids also that are homeless that are in school. They are, I don't know about them. I know that if I'm homeless, as a child, if I'm a child and I'm homeless, I don't see how I'm going to do well in school. Mm -hmm. So we need to also address the housing issue for these homeless children that are going to school. Because what, a child getting out of school, imagine being a child, you sit in the classroom, your next door, the, the child next, next to you is looking forward to going home. Mm -hmm. It's looking forward to going to their own fridge. It's looking forward to going to their own bed. But you are not looking forward to going to your own bed. Mm -hmm. You know that you're going to a hotel room or even possibly not even a hotel room. You're not going to concentrate. It's not you. That child will not concentrate. So these are some of the things that I've heard from her. I actually, I have um, one time I went somewhere and this lady literally accosted me for one hour. We were talking about this particular issue. I said, that is true, because the children that come to my office, a lot of them are also homeless. And I can see how a child or a young person can possibly not do well in school if they don't know where they're going to lay their head. And they, they are ashamed to even tell their peers where they live. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the issues that we really need to address. And I hear, I, I've heard a lot of that, a lot of that, you know. So, and the other thing also is violence in the schools. Violence in the schools, the bullying issue. I don't think any child needs to go to school and be bullied. Mm -hmm. So I know that the schools are doing something about it, but I think that we need to educate more. We need to educate our children more. Say, look, nobody wants to be talked down to. And school is supposed to be a, a learning environment, not a place where you wear armor and defend yourself. And that's what it's turning into. So the, we need to educate everybody that is involved to say, look, don't bully each other. And also, in, uh, uh, educate the teachers too, because the teachers, quite all right, they have a lot in their hand because of the size of the classes. But, you know, ways to identify, you know, a kid that is troubled. But in that case though, I say, not just the teacher, that we should hire more professionals multicultural, especially with Brockton, hire more diverse, multiculturally in tuned professionals to work within the school. You're talking like adjustment counselors and guidance counselors and things like that? Yes. Now, let me back up a minute. You yes. were talking about communication. Yes. I remember when my, my kids are long out of school now. Mm -hmm. Did come back with the notice and the backpack and it would be folded up so small, if I even got it. So, you've done communications too. Yes. You had your own TV show here. Yes. Okay. You know how to communicate. How would you communicate as a school committee member to get the word out? Um, maybe you're not relying on the school department to do it, but you're one of eight people. Do you have any ideas? Yes. Uh, again, like I told you, I said I've been learning so much, and, um, and as I go along, I, I, I'm coming up with ideas. I, I, I was talking on the radio, and I told them, um, I, which I've already started, I'm going to start a talk show mm -hmm. on the radio that says, the title is, what is What's on Your Mind? Mm -hmm. What's on your mind, what it does is that it gives the community an opportunity to say just about anything. I'm not controlling what comes out of their mouth. So that way, I'm expecting that people will call in and we just talk about um, what is on their mind, including with a focus, too, towards what's going on in the school system. In fact, I tried that out at, 
I actually tried it out at Massasoit, the gateway program, where I went into a classroom and I said, what's on your mind? And the kids, they were looking at me like, okay, Miss Rogers, what is it this time you're doing? What is on your mind? And believe it or not, in that little section, we identified a problem. And that problem was students getting to school late. They worry about getting to school late. So now I'm saying, okay, we, next time I come, we are going to solve that problem. We, not me, I'm not going to solve it for you. You're going to tell me how you're going to solve your coming to school class late. What is it that you're doing that is causing you to, to come to class late? Are you going to bed late? You stay and watch TV and on computer till 4 a.m. and expect to be in class by 7 or 8? Mm -hmm. Is that the problem? Is there any other issue, social issue that we need to solve? So if we, both of us, we all work together, we figure out what it is that is causing that problem. So that is the format that I'm trying to take with this. And if I have to take it further to television, I will do that. Well, I'm going to tell you that as an elected official, yes. we have a government channel besides the public channel. Okay. Anyone who's an elected official can utilize the channel. And it's not as hard as the public channel because the public channel you have to have a whole crew for. Yes. If you want to come here and communicate with your constituents, the mayor does it now. The council president, Bob Sullivan, did it. Council president, Ian Neary, does it now. School committee members can do it as well. Thank so you very much we'll, because we'll, I'm going to take it. I, I will take it up. You could probably be the one to take me up on my offer. Yes, okay? I'm going to take it up. Now, I think we have about three minutes left. Yes. I want you to, I'm going to give you half of that time, but I got a quick question for you. Okay. And it's kind of a quick answer, and you, we don't have a lot of time to elaborate because it's a half an hour. Okay. The whole standardized testing thing, the, the MCAS, the PARC, the Common Core, all of that. How do you feel about that in, in a nutshell? Do you think it's effective? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Well, I would say it's a, it's a gray area at this point. Reason being, we do need to take tests to measure the standards of what the kids are doing. Mm -hmm. We do need to take tests. However, I w can we teach the kids instead of trying, doing so much, focusing on how to take the test? Mm -hmm. Because there seems to be more focus on how to take the test than teaching the subject areas. Okay. I should have left more time for that. I want you to take, what do we got, two minutes? You have a minute and 30. Talk to your constituents. Tell them why Blessing Rogers and how to get in touch with you. Okay. Well, first of all, I really want to thank the community because... All of you out there, as I'm walking around the neighborhood, um, you've allowed me to come into your space, and I thank you for doing that and giving me the opportunity to be part of the process and being patient with me even when you, you didn't want to talk to me. Again, um, I believe November 3rd is very important for the city of Brockton. Reason being because we need to elect people who have the best interest of Brockton in mind. Especially with the school committee. You have to let's elect somebody who has the best interest of children in mind. And that person is Blessing Rogers because I have the advocacy background. I work with children and will continue to work with children. I am an administrator and activist in the community and I am just available to work. So uh, what I'm saying here is when you do vote on November 3rd, please do vote for Blessing Rogers because I am here for you and a vote for me will be a vote for yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Blessing. Thank you for coming on. I could have talked to you for another half an hour. I know. Okay. <laughs> You're watching uh, Democratically Speaking. Mark Linder, your host. Stay tuned for more coverage leading all the way up until November 3rd, Election Day. Uh, your choices are very important. Make sure you exercise your civic duty and vote. Thanks for joining us.